How did JC? Hey, JC, it's Joel and Dennis. How you doing this morning? I'm doing well. How are you guys? We're doing good. We, got, I know, I saw you. You gave some comments uh, to Benzinga yesterday on Chipotle Mexican Grill, and I actually, I had to keep it off my screen yesterday so I wouldn't short it. I know you came up with some <laughs> higher price targets here. I think. Have you seen? I mean, maybe except for Priceline, have you seen a pre-market move and then a reversal? Anything like this in all your years trading? Because this stock went after hours, Joel's talking, and went down to 605 after hours on that report. And then, you know, the conference call came and they announced a buyback in there. Now it's in more store openings. And then, boom, the stock, you know, got back all of the losses after hours, ended up going higher. And then yesterday, just opened at the lows and just blast off into oblivion. So you basically are 120 points off where this was trading after hours just two nights ago. That was an impressive move, JC. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, I have seen this before, and there's a reason why I'm not a day trader, and there's a reason why I don't trade after hours on one-minute charts. It's, it's, it's not for me, you know. So a guy like myself, with a little bit longer time frame, I wouldn't have even seen any of that. You know, that's, that's really not my problem. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not my time frame. I'm not sitting here trading one-minute charts when Good companies point. report their earnings. So, and, and I think this is a, probably a good example why. Um, I think this looks great. Um, I, I think it probably goes a lot higher. You gave that nice price target back on Netflix in the day when it was 600. You said 700. Are you going to give that 800 price target on Chipotle? I'm just curious here at JC because I love it when you give price targets there because you seem to work. They seem to work out for us. What's your yeah, price target? Yeah, I, you I already one? set an $800 price. Yeah. Oh, you, you already got, got it. Yeah. 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 There's something at oh, Benzinga yeah. if you guys could drop it in the chat there. Uh, he gave some comments yesterday. Uh, well, I mean, it's hard to fight the momentum here, and uh, that that's a good point. Uh, let, let's move on here. Uh, you got a, a, a dog that's uh, barking here. Okay, this... Getting back to it, just real quick, I, 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 you don't want to own this below yesterday's lows. So, like, the $700 level, you only want to own it above that. Below that, you can't be in it. Um, I, would be, I would be adding to positions above the January highs as well. I would, be, I would be extra aggressive if we can get above the January highs. And risk manager-wise, no reason to be long uh, if we're below yesterday's lows and taking profit to hit 800. So I think the risk is very well defined, and we have a set price target, and we know where to add. So, you know, when you first look at a chart like Chipotle, you got a lot of gaps. It might look a little bit messy on the surface. But in reality, I actually think it's pretty clean. Yeah, man with a plan. I like that. Uh, General Motors uh, sneaks under 30 bucks yesterday uh, and turns around, trading much higher in the pre-market. Uh, any thoughts on uh, General Motors? You know, we, we could probably get a mean reversion here back towards 34. I would be selling that very quickly up there, however. Um, you know, when you have these flat 200-day moving averages, you know, momentum's in a bearish range. Markets making new highs, this thing's making new lows. Um, you know, not something that, you know, I'd be diving in. Um, you know, sure, can we get up to 34 and, 34 and change? Of course, but I'd be selling there. It's not something I'd be buying. Another stock that we're seeing pop here this morning, we haven't had a chance to talk about on the show because there's so many earnings reports here, is Celgene, and that stock just continues to move up here. Uh, did report earnings here this morning, 123 versus 120 and 2.25 billion versus 2.27 billion, so a little light on the revenue, but nice being the bottom line. And CELG is popping up to new all-time highs here again this morning. It's up at 139. Is this one you're still or you're looking at here, Celgene? What are your thoughts on this one, JC? You know, as soon as it broke that downtrend line from the March highs, uh, you know, this thing's been a beast, upward sloping, 200-day moving average, uh, you know, beautiful uptrend, longer term. Um, it probably goes to 143 where I'd be taking profits. Uh, from a risk management standpoint, you can't own it if, uh, if we're below 129, in my opinion. So, you know, that's your risk, which we're very far from that at this point. So it's not exactly the best entry point, but I do think it goes higher. I'm, I'm a seller at 143. JC, I know you, uh, you know, got uh, interested in, um, you know, the bonds and the TLT. I have the chart up here. Long consolidation period here since June. Uh, things are looking a little bit itchy here. Of course, uh, there's still the fear of rates going up in September. Janet Yellen seems to keep professing that. Uh, give us your outlook on, on, are you still into the bonds or what's your take? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who... You know, you said there's fears of, of rates going being risen in September. I, I couldn't disagree more. I don't think 
anybody's scared of that. I, I think that's 100% off the table. I think there's zero chance of that. Um, whether Janet Yellen said that or not, um, I don't know who listens to her. I don't see any point. I think you've got to look at the market. Um, you know, the Fed doesn't control interest rates. The market does. So Janet Yellen's opinion is really irrelevant. Um, and, and quite frankly, I don't think anybody's worried about a rate hike in September. I think that, uh, last I checked on the Fed Fund Futures, there was like a 4% chance or something like that. Um, so I think that's completely off the table. I'm still in the camp that the Fed doesn't do anything this year. I've been saying it all year. I think at, at, at best, they raise next year maybe and and you know you know even then uh you know i'm not i i wouldn't be surprised if they wait till 2017 so uh bonds yeah i still like them i still think they go higher i think tlts they go to 123 i think that's where you sell them what about under armor ua it's uh raising their guidance up here this morning stock is breaking out into new all-time highs taking out a little bit of resistance that it was making there yesterday just uh at ninety dollars it's at ninety two thirty nine here in the pre-market right now hundred eleven thousand shares have already traded this kind of looks like a breakout on the chart and when you get up to 92 you start thinking about triple digits on this one do you think it's got a shot at the hundred dollar area here eventually under armor you know, it probably does. Um, you know, the trend is great. I mean, this is just a this is just a monster of a name. I mean, there's really nothing you can say about this, you know, to argue against it. You know, the only reason that I wouldn't be buying right here is because it's hard to manage risk. You know, how, where do you, you know, where do you place your stop? At what point do you know you're wrong? You know, we don't have any of that. Um, I do think that a big key level was around 86 bucks, and we took that out. So yeah, I, I think we're you know I think we're heading higher. I see it's trading free market ninety two and a half. You know, so that makes sense. Um, I'd be a seller right around ninety five. Can we get to a hundred? Sure. Um, I'd be a seller at ninety five. I wouldn't be buying here simply because you know the risk. The risk isn't very well defined. I mean, you're gapping higher to new highs. You know, at what point are you wrong? It, it, it's kind of hard to tell. So for me, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be adding to positions at all here. Uh, but I'd be a seller around 95, which is, you know, the upper uh, end of this parallel channel going back to last year, um, you know, uh, trend channel. So I would be I would be a seller up there, 95, 95 and change. Uh, JC, I got a question for you, one coming out of the chat here, too, directed at Dennis. Sure. But I'll, I'll give you a, a shot at it. Uh, unemployment claims are lowest since 1973. And uh, Hamad was looking for any potential stock plays uh, to benefit from this news. Is there anything you have that's uh, directly correlated or indirectly? I, I would I don't know anything about unemployment claims. You know, okay. the, the people listening to people listening to this radio show, you know, hear me on. I mean, the last thing they want to hear is my thoughts on unemployment. <laughs> okay. I, I wouldn't know the first thing. Um, I wasn't even alive in the seventies, so you know, I, I, I couldn't tell you. And if the stocks that are, are you know correlated to unemployment claims, I don't know. I'm a technician. I look at price. So unemployment for me has nothing to do with uh, with anything that we do. Uh, we just try to make money in the market. We got to follow price. You know, if you want, you know, if you want to be an economist, there's a reason why economists don't manage money, right? It's a great point, JC. You know, and I, I I really appreciate you know your honesty always like that, and you always talk to technicals and you stick to what you know, and that's the key with anything. Like I would say, you know, I don't know that much about the economy either, you know, or anything else, or even fundamentals for a lot of parts. But you know, if you know technicals or you know you know your style of trading, it can work. You know, even if you don't know all the different macro outlook or following the Fed. I mean, people who are following the Fed and stuff, trying to figure out whether to buy or sell stocks. You know, maybe if you're a real long-term investment manager, maybe that's different. But if you're looking for trades, I don't know if you even have to always follow the Fed as closely as everybody does. So, uh, JC, I just I want to change. Need, I don't think you need to follow. I don't think you need to follow the Fed at all. I don't know what the Fed has <laughs> to do with anything that we're doing. You know, the, the market controls interest rates. Always has. The market controls interest rates. The Fed just follows what the market tells it to do. Always has. So if you're if you're wondering where rates are going, just look at the market. Look at Fed fund futures. Look at where rates are going. Don't worry about what the Federal Reserve is saying or not saying or doing or all of that is a complete waste of time. Anybody who's been listening to Fed has gotten this trade wrong, and anybody who's been listening to the market has gotten this trade right. So I mean, it, it, it's a no-brainer to me. It's a no-brainer. Just follow the market. JC, a tweet you tweeted out there, and I retweeted it there just a couple days ago. Great tweet here. I'll read it. Just because, this is what JC says, just because your stock got cut in half 
doesn't mean it can't easily get cut in half again. That is just a fabulous quote there because everybody always jumps and they see a stock going down, cut in half, buy the dippers coming right away, all this will bounce back. And I think you may have been referring to L-O-C-K. I'm not sure if you were or not because that stock got cut in half that day here. It has bounced back a little bit there from the lows there. But, you know, when you're bottom picking and stuff with FTC and all kinds of other fun stuff happening there, sometimes you can really get hurt. And people don't consider that. You know, when a stock goes from 16 to 8, well, if it goes from eight to four, you lose half your money there again. And if it goes from four to two, yeah. you lose half your money there again. And it's something that people don't consider. They just think sixteen to eight. Well, it'll come back to sixteen, and I'm gonna, you know, double my money here on this thing easily. You know, the greed factor comes in. But you know, as the stock prices go lower, it's like it becomes even easier for them to get cut in half again because it doesn't have to go from sixteen to eight. It doesn't have to fall eight points anymore. It has to fall only four points to get cut in half again. So great point there, JC. You just want to expand on those thoughts? Yeah, um, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a subtweeter, so if I was referring to uh, LifeLock, I would have I would have uh, put that ticker symbol there. But um, you know, getting back to the LifeLock, um, I think it's great the fact that the stock got crushed. Um, you know, there was no reason to be long. I mean, it literally, you know, people talk about oh because of the news announcement or whatever it is, maybe. But I'll tell you this much: if you draw a downtrend line from the highs in 2014. You have a very clean downtrend line. You kissed that in June and rolled over from there. So if you're following price, you wouldn't have been in this stock in the first place. Um, if anything, you would have been short. So I think it's great that LifeLock got killed. I hope it goes to zero. Um, I think, I think, <laughs> so I, do I. I, 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 I so do I, DC. Full disclosure, I got I some great. I got some puts in that. And, uh, yeah, they're working out pretty nicely here. That Yesterday gave me a little bit of pain, but uh, a lot of problems with that company. Uh, JC, I know you've, uh, in the past, you've uh, been into the social media stocks. I think you uh, uh, kind of got out of them a little bit. Uh, boy, Facebook. Any, any comments on Facebook here? Uh, Dennis got me pretty good on the bet on that one. Uh, looking for triple digits at Facebook? Yeah, you know, we've had a, a target of $100 for a while. Um, you know, I think uh, we basically got up there this week. So, you know, our target's been hit. Um, you know, we, we like this, you know, and it's not so much the social media names. I mean, I guess, you know, obviously this is one of the social media names. But it's supposed to be the Internet name. You look at the Dow Jones Internet Index. The ticker symbol for the ETF is FDN, Frank, David, Nancy. And that is Google, Netflix, Amazon. I mean, these things are horses. So... Um, you know, I, I, I love seeing this. I think it's great. We've got a target a little bit higher, about 76 um, on the FDN, but uh, it's getting a little rich up here. And at this point, for new positions, it's hard to manage risk. So I wouldn't be putting new positions now. If you missed it, you know, I wouldn't be chasing it. But uh, I do think it's got a little bit more room to the upside. Uh, we'd be selling uh, FDN at 76. That's our target. Couple earnings reports here tonight. Would like to get your thoughts on Visa here. This has been a stock that's just been a fabulous stock here for basically the last five years. You go back to 2009, 2010, the stock was a $10 stock. It's now a $70 stock here, trading $71.97. They are going to report earnings here after the bell. What are your thoughts here, technically speaking, on V? Sure. Um, well, I'm not, I, I don't trade around earnings, I try to stay yeah. away from them. Um, at all at all costs, so it's not something I would be buying for earnings. Um, the opposite, I'd probably be selling it beforehand, but uh, I do think it's going to 75. That's been our target. That's a 261.8% Fibonacci extension from the correction um, uh, early 2014. So, you know, that's been our target. I, I haven't really seen much of a reason to change that. So um, I guess that's where we're headed. Um, you know, where we got, they, got, they got earnings today, so... I wouldn't mess with it simply because of that. You know, it's a coin flip, um, so I, I wouldn't touch it going into that. But um, I'd be I'd be a buyer of dips, I guess. Um, from a, from a tactical perspective, I would not be long if we're below seventy and a half. So you take those main highs. If we're below that, um, I, I wouldn't be in it. Um, so right now we're kind of in between the risk level and the target. So kind of in no man's land, really, from 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 my from my perspective. But you know, what are you what are you going to say bad about the start? Things would be. JC, before we let you go, just some general market thoughts here. Uh, Apple uh, was going to try and, uh, you know, stick the dagger in the heart of the bull market yesterday. Turned around and they bought everything off the open. Rallied back here. Uh, what do you think? Just a little bit of a bounce here. Maybe they take it down today when people are unsuspecting. Any thoughts on the overall market? 
Well, getting to the Apple, as you guys know, you know, we had a 129 target in February, and there's been no reason to be in this uh, ever since. Uh, this has been completely dead money. Anybody ended up in, getting chopped around. So I think it's great. Um, and it's still in that range. So, you know, until we either resolve to the upside of the range um, or, or break down to the downside, I don't see any reason to be involved with this. So the fact that it's been chopping around is exactly the reason why we respect our targets and once they're hit, stay away. So Apple's still in that range. I still think there's no reason to be involved, and I still think you stay away. And with that said, as far as the market goes, same thing. You know, we, we've been stuck in this range. You know, you, you guys and I, we talk about this every week. It's been stuck in this range all year. Anybody who's been trying to, you know, uh, unless you're really buying the dips and, and, and selling the upper end of the range, I mean, you've been getting chopped around, um, which I think is great. You know, when markets are not trending, um, in all likelihood, they're going to continue to not trend. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. So uh, I, I don't see any reason to mess in this market. Um, you know, we, I've been saying this for months. Um, I still think you stay away. Uh, you know, there's, there's better places to be. You know, you want to be in things that are trending. You don't want to be in these chop bets. I mean, if you're trading the S&P 500, man, God bless you. You know, this is you're not having much fun, in my opinion. And you want to be in things that are trending. You guys asked me last week what I like. You know, you want to look at something like gold miners is, is what I mentioned to you guys. I mean, you want to talk about beautiful trends. I mean, this is a nice trend. And these things are just getting absolutely destroyed. So at this point, gold miners hit our downside target uh, this week, our, our tactical, our short-term uh, downside target. So I think now you fade strength. I think that's the move now in, in gold miners after our downside targets were hit. But these are the things you want to be trading, things that are trending. You look at the S&P 500, you look at that chop fast. Ugh. <laughs> you know, you want to stay away from things like that. We've been saying this since. Since, like, February, March, we've been saying to stay away from this market. And, and, and it's not that I'm a genius or that I, I, I know something that some other people don't. It has nothing to do with that. It, it's very clear. You know, when you have a sideways market, you know, those are the, those are the toughest. And it's not just S&P. It could be anything. It could be oil. It could be uh, transport. It could be Apple. It doesn't matter what it is. But when you look at a given market and you have this sideways range, you don't want to. You don't want to mess with that. Look elsewhere. Look, there's, there's other. There's always. There's always other places to be. There's always markets that are trending. Always. You got to do homework and you got to find them. That's it. J. C. Peretz, founder of Eagle Bay Capital, telling us that like the way it is. We appreciate your honesty, J. C. Great thoughts on the market. We'll talk to you again next Thursday. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, J. C.